And so the old beliefs that we cherish so much, even though they work against us, are nothing more than physical patterns and recordings in the brain that if we stop using them, the brain is designed to get rid of them. The problem is, almost no one figured out that we had to have new roads, that we had to create new highways, teaching steps that you can use to create those new highways. But if you'd like to take some notes, there are some things you can do beginning now, beginning this weekend, that will help. First, number one, monitor. The word is monitor. Mon listen to everything you say this weekend. Listen to everything you say out loud. Listen to everything you think consciously. Be aware of it. The also, listen to the things that the people next to you say all weekend. Listen to their programs. Listen to the programs of the people who are up here on this stage. Everything you think and everything you say is always just the tip of that iceberg of hundreds of thousands of similar programs that, that are underneath. So if you hear yourself saying those, if you hear yourself going forward and confident and sure of yourself and, and able to see the vision and the dream and hang on to it, if you have the confidence, then you've got programs that are already helping you get there. And what you, then what you can do is, you, by monitoring your programs, so you know what they are, that's why you have to listen to them. By monitoring those programs, then you know what they are and you can strengthen those programs. But if you have programs that tell you what you can't do, or that you're not good enough, or that it can't work for you, or that it's too much work, or that you have to, it's too much time away from your family. By the way, I did a lot of research on this. This business does not take too much time away from your family. Television takes too much time away from your family. People who say, I, I, don't have enough, I, I don't have enough time to spend with my family because of the business, are really saying I don't have enough time to sit in front of the television set in the living room while the kids watch television set in their, in their bedroom. Now, I know it sounds fanatical to say turn off the TV, but I would suggest this. If you're serious about your future and your life, and I know you're here this weekend because you're serious about your future and your life, then please take what I'm suggesting as seriously as I'm suggesting it. Try it for 30 days. After you get rid of the, after you get past the kids complaining and after you get past the discussions you'll have about it and you start to get in a new pattern and a new habit of giving yourself the right kinds of programs, just imagine what could happen in your life. You might even get your kids back again. You might even bring that family closer together. I know my talk isn't about television, but it has not helped us. It has hurt us, and you can help us by turning yours off. Next, after monitor, the second thing you can begin doing immediately is to edit. Edit. You have the ability right now to stop anything you are about to think or say or do that works against you or gives you the wrong kind of program. Stop right there. If you're about to say something to your husband or your wife and, it, and it in any way puts that person down, stop. Why would we ever... Now, just imagine that every one of us has a, has a computer keyboard that we, that we carry right around our neck. And there's a sign on top of our computer keyboard that says, Warning, everything you type into my computer keyboard will be stored for life and acted on as though it's true. Because that's how the brain works. Now, what would you type into your kids' computers the next time they do something wrong? Would you say stupid or idiot? Or, or, or what would you type in? If, 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 what if you couldn't say anything out loud to your kids for a while and you actually had to type messages in? Elise and I were in a grocery store a while back, and we, it was in a Safeway store, and there was a lady in the checkout line right in front of us, and there was a little boy in her cart with some of the groceries. And I think this boy must have been about three and a half years old. And she lifted him out of the cart, and she said, Mommy forgot to get the bread. Run down the aisle and get the bread. The little boy toddled, ran down the aisle, found a loaf of bread, a lo of rye bread, and brought it back and handed it to his mommy. And his mother took the loaf of bread and said, you idiot, I wanted white bread. How stupid. Here's this little kid. I wanted to, I wanted to, who's stupid? Hi, lady. Here's your sign.
Don't you sometimes just want to say, you need a brain transplant. Here, try mine. It works. Wham. What about when you're about to say something to the one you love, your wife or your husband? If you want to practice self-talk, you might start, you start learning self-talk by listening to self-talk on tapes. You practice it at home every day. This isn't something where you, you just learn how to use it and then say, well, now I'll see if my business gets better. Would you ever say anything to that person you care about that doesn't... Wouldn't you want to build that person up? When you're editing your own self-talk, you're saying, I'm taking personal responsibility for my life. I'm making a choice. And I will never, ever again say something to or about that person that could any way put that person down. I will build you up. I believe in you. I love you. I trust you. You may have someone in your household who, who just doesn't feel they're doing anything right. And they grew up being told that. And it's come true. And so now you have to go to that person and you have to say, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I don't even know most of you, and yet I believe in you already. If, you, if, I, had, if I had no more than 20 minutes with you, if I had an hour with you, it would take me no more than a few minutes of conversation with you to find enough wonderful, incredible things about you that I could spend the rest of the hour sharing with you, telling you how good you were and what you can do and how capable you are, and I don't even know you yet. Now imagine that person at home that's waiting for our best input, and their computer keyboard also says, whatever you type into my, my mind, will be stored for life and acted on as though it's true. What an incredible opportunity that says. Not only do we edit now, not only should you edit what you get for yourself. Can I do this? Yes, I can. Um, let's see, I think I'll, uh, I'll make those calls Monday. I do everything I need to do when I need to do it. I'm, I, I make phone calls. I enjoy. I, I, love, I love prospecting. Prospecting is fun. I'm meeting my friends when I'm out there. They don't know they're my friends yet, but they're my friends, and they're going to become my best friends. Instead of, woe is me, another blue Monday. Looks like it's going to rain. Edit. You're adult. Even children, little children can do this. You certainly can. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. If someone else can believe in you, you owe it to yourself to believe in yourself and begin, if you haven't already, begin giving yourself those messages that literally change the old programs that were working against you. Third, reprogram. If you want to reprogram, you've got to make the decision to do that. I suppose one of the reasons I looked at this whole thing more from an educator's point of view is because some years ago, before I went back to school to get my degree in motivational psychology, I was in a different field. I was in the field of linguistics, the study and use of human language. And uh, in fact, at one time, I was a Spanish-English interpreter for the National Security Agency in Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And at that time, if we wanted to teach somebody a new language, we had, we had only a, a, about three things we could do. One, we could send them to that country and immerse them in that language, which is how children learn a language, is just to have it talked around them. Or we could play tapes and have them play them in the background, which is also how children, you, learned your first language, was to have it, you were hearing it in the background. Or we could get them to study it out of a book. You don't learn self-talk studying it out of a book any more than you learn a new language studying it out of a book. You start by learning the new programs. You can listen to those. You don't have to memorize them, you just play them in the background, morning after morning, evening after evening. You then begin practicing. You share those words with your life. You, you use the same kinds of programs with other people and with yourself. And in a short time, you start to hear things change. And then you apply that to your business. And watch, can you imagine what could happen in your life, in your home, in your business, if for one month or six months or a year you didn't have any negative programs to deal with? 
because you had made the choice to make a difference, to reprogram? Number four, practice. Practice, practice, practice as a way of life. When you're using the new self-talk, you're not kidding yourself. It's like the person who said, well, Dr. Helmstetter, how can I tell myself I'm a non-smoker when I smoke? How can I give myself self-talk that says I'm a non-smoker when I smoke? And I said, I'll give you some self-talk. I was born a non-smoker. That's the natural way for me to be. I am not a smoker. I don't lack confidence. I have confidence. I enjoy showing the plan. I believe in myself. When you hear that from yourself, at first it sounds a little silly perhaps or a little strange, but I discovered this. The people who succeed in this business understand self-talk. They understand the language. They literally surround themselves with the language of success and they change their old programs and create new ones. Just writing a few affirmation cards on the mirror does not do it. For years we thought it could, it doesn't. That would be like learning enough Spanish to order a taco. If you want to learn the language of success, learn the language of success. And by the way, I must add to that, that, that you, you will probably never find a, an environment that is more filled with the right kind of self-talk and hearing the right kind of programs than you get from this stage. Your leadership is the, is the prime example of what good self-talk self -talk sounds like.